The Buffalo Bills have consistently been one of these teams that we expect to make that run for the Super Bowl. They have Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, a number of playmakers really on each side of the ball. But the problem is not quite enough playmakers. We really are searching for a true wide receiver number two, more weapons on offense for Josh Allen, obviously Dalton Kincaid to play tight end or big slot was the first round draft pick last season. And then defensively, injuries have been a problem. Matt Milano, one of the most underrated, best linebackers in the league, has really struggled to stay on the field here in 2023. Von Miller, a lot is going on with him. And he really, when he has been on the field, hasn't been all that good for Buffalo. So you have a lot of things to do in regards to, you know, out with the old, in with the new, getting more playmakers for Josh Allen and building a team that's actually capable of sustaining Super Bowl type success. We know about the Bills going to four in a row and losing all of them back in the 90s. We're trying to right those wrongs and maybe win four here in this video. Although that seems a bit unlikely. And when you look at this team, there are obviously things to like. Mitch Morse is really solid. Deion Dawkins is one of the better left tackles in the league. Outside of that, I'm not sure there's any like guaranteed mainstay of the offensive line. Osiris Torrance has potential. Of course, big time mauler, rookie out of Florida by way of Louisiana Lafayette. Followed Billy Napier to the Gators and things are not going well for that program at the moment. But yeah, Osiris Torrance can be good. Definitely want to develop him as a pass protector. His uh, image here, or like player type, looks pretty much nothing like him, I think I would say. Um, but I guess similar hairstyle, I don't know but uh, it is what it is. Now, the weird thing, great picture of Dalton Kincaid, by the way, um, two tight ends are just not gonna be used in Madden the way they would be in real life. And especially with Kincaid being more of like the move tight end where Dawson Knox might play in line. But again, that's not really gonna be much of a thing in Madden because we're not gonna put Kincaid as our slot receiver. So, one of those guys has to go. And then Gabriel Davis is a tough one because, I mean, he's a nice deep threat. I don't think he's the best wide receiver two option for an offense. I'm not a Gabe Davis hater. I'm just realistic about, you know, the player. And he's he's a good deep threat. He's capable of having some big games because of that. However, he's just not consistent enough as a wide receiver to an offense, in my opinion. And I, I just think that in real life, they should probably try to find a true wide receiver number two and keep Gabe Davis around, certainly. However, in Madden, he is highly rated. He is only 24, 25 years old with star development. This is probably somebody I do want to keep around. And when you look at his contract, it is expiring. So... We want to extend him as soon as possible or potentially trade him at the midseason mark. James Cook is fine, I guess. Stefan Diggs will be fine. Josh Allen, we all know about. Electric type playmaker. Everyone points to the interceptions, and obviously you would like the turnovers to go down. I'm not saying, oh, it's totally fine. But in terms of actual like turnover-worthy plays, he's one of the lower guys in the league. He's just, when he does make one, it seems to be guaranteed that it's going to be picked off. But at his best... He can do things that almost nobody else can do on the football field, and that's why Josh Allen is truly a superstar X-Factor type player here in Madden, because he is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He has some of the highest potential of any player in the league. He's really an incredible talent, and when it comes to draft evaluation, this is one that I missed on, because I watch him at Wyoming, and I go, I don't really see it. He's got a big arm. He's playing in the Mountain West. He's still incredibly turnover prone and some of that hasn't entirely gone away like we just talked about uh he's not accurate at all now he did totally rework his throwing mechanics you know a couple off seasons ago i think after his second year in the league i want to say jordan palmer worked with him there and that, that's kind of a tough thing to predict but he like that that's kind of why draft evaluation for quarterbacks is incredibly difficult because you don't know where they're going to go how they're going to develop what strides they're going to make so you do bet on the guys with incredibly high upside because those are the players that if they develop end up being some of the best players in the entire league. This video is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. And if you live in one of these yellow states, 
you are eligible to play my favorite way to play daily fantasy sports, which is the pick'em mode. If you live in one of the silver or light gray, you can't play pick'em, but you can play their fantasy best ball tournaments. And if you live in one of the dark gray states, you're not eligible to play at all. I apologize. These are my picks for Sunday night football, if you're watching this pre-Sunday night football. And... So they don't let you combine and use code Bengal on Underdog Fantasy, by the way. You'd be helping me out a ton on your first deposit. They don't let you combine quarterback passing yards with the receiver on that same team receiving yards anymore, which is frustrating. But I do like Lamar passing yards a lot tomorrow, and I'm not taking it because I also like Isaiah Likely receiving yards and Odell receiving yards. I'm taking a chance on the Parker Washington receptions line with the scorcher it's a 1.25x multiplier so i put twenty dollars on a five man with insurance potentially win 250 with insurance so that means i can get four or five and still get something back so roquan smith just has not been that close to seven solo tackles recently and he's playing a team that i expect to be passing the ball quite a bit so really don't think that He's going to have a chance to get eight solo tackles. Maybe he does. Maybe he proves me wrong. But I like my chances at least. Isaiah Likely is in a great matchup. Of course, no Mark Andrews. Tight end one. He's been going off recently. And he's playing a team that gives up a lot of yards to tight ends. Parker Washington continues to be more involved. Travis Etienne, again, continues to be a great receiving option out of the backfield. Four catches a game his last three. And he's playing a team that's very good against the run. I don't expect him to have a big game tomorrow on the ground, but maybe as a receiver, he makes an impact. And that's pretty much it. Lamar Jackson, higher passing attempts. Again, I like yards. I prefer yards, but I also think he's going to end up with about 30, maybe low 30s passing attempts. His line for completions is 19 and a half, which he hasn't really been over for much of this entire season. So that might be a little bit high if you wanted to take the under. I don't particularly like taking a lowers. It's just, it's. I don't like rooting against guys as much as I like rooting for them. So those are my picks for Sunday Night Football. Use code Bengal on Underdog Fantasy for a first-time deposit match up to $100. And thank you to Underdog for sponsoring this video. And then defensively, a number of good players. Ed Oliver, Gregory Rousseau is a nice piece. Rousseau is uh, only, what, 23 maybe? Yeah, 23 years old, star dev. A really good run defender. 86 power moves in the game as well. But Von Miller on the other side is somebody that we just can't work with at this point. He's 34 years old. When you look at his contract here, he is under contract for a long time. I am not going to do that. I'm trading Von Miller as soon as humanly possible. We are moving on. I'm getting whatever I can for him, which actually could be quite a decent amount, even as a 34-year-old. So, but we need help on the edge. Although AJ Epinez has taken a big step in real life. He should probably be higher rated than a 75. Corners are nice. Taron Johnson, one of the better nickel corners in the league. Rasul Douglas is a great option. Benford, uh, Christian Benford is a nice CB4 here for us. Kyir Elam, kind of looking like a bust but he's still a 75 overall in the game with star depth for some reason. And then Tredavious White, obviously, when healthy, is a beast. Safety duo, Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, been good for a while. Matt Milano, when healthy, obviously very good. Terrell Bernard has played well this season and um, still probably need another linebacker. But there's, again, definitely a lot to work with. The big problem with this team is the ages of some of the better players. There are not a ton of young stars on this team. When you look at the highest rated players, obviously you have the 27-year-old Josh Allen, but Diggs is close to 30. White is close to 30. Miller is 34. Micah Hyde's 32. Jordan Poyer's 32. Milano's close to 30. And then you have some of the younger talents. But if you guys have played Madden at all, you know, these guys are only going to get significantly worse. So do we want to be realistic or do we want to make the team actually really good? It's going to be tough to find that balance for sure. We actually end up having two skill points for Von Miller. So we're going to be able to get him up to a 90 overall speed rusher. And hopefully that holds a lot of weight with some team. Again, I know a lot of people like they love the realistic rebuilds. And I like to do those as well. We're going to get to those, of course, in the offseason more so. Or maybe not the offseason, but closer to the draft, which I mean, that's going to be January, even though the draft is in April. I mean, like closer to the end of the season just so we have the records kind of more finalized but um 
in Madden, you kind of have to be a little bit cheesy sometimes in order to build a team that can actually compete in simulation. Now, simulation's really bad. So in order to combat that, you got to make a really, really, really good team. And in order to do that, you can't have guys that work down to an 80 overall after regression, right? You got to get rid of them. So we have to. At the end of the day, I've said this before, these are about having fun. So we're going to do whatever is fun to make this team really good. And yeah, Von Miller's got to go. And honestly, I don't think many Bills fans are going to complain about that. If I had to bet, I would say probably not. So Micah Hyde has an expiring contract. Gabe Davis does. We have 6.99 million in cap space. Now, I know that trading Von Miller is going to be incredibly expensive for me. It's a cap penalty of 46 million. Oh my God. But I still think it's in the best interest of the bills here. That's a lot of penalty though. Leonard Floyd is 30 already? Oh my goodness. I just feel like that draft wasn't that long ago, but I guess this is his seventh year in the league. It just seems like... It seems crazy that he's 30. It's not, obviously, but it does just feel wild. Well, see, this is very interesting. David Edwards and Von Miller would get me T. Higgins, who we'd have to extend. How are T. Higgins and Gabe Davis the same overall? I, I, this is not like a hate Gabe Davis video. I, I think he's a pretty good player, right? But it's just T. Higgins has wide receiver one potential. I don't know that Gabe Davis does. How are they both 84 overall with star dev? It just seems not right. I'm sure if you pulled up like just pure stats and use that for your evaluation, maybe it would come out similar. But I mean, these are guys that are in two different levels. I am going to wait on Von Miller. I'm afraid if we trade him, we're not going to be able to extend T. Higgins. I don't know exactly when the uh, salary cap penalty is going to kick in, so I'm going to wait for a little while to trade Von Miller. Try to get some of these other guys out the door first. And a lot of these guys are just locked up on long-term contracts. So we're in a bit of a tough spot. And I am also trying to win this first season. So I don't want to just completely butcher the team, trade Micah Hyde, and have no one to replace him with, right? Certainly not going to be Taylor Rapp. So we've got some tough decisions to make. I don't know how we're going to do this just yet. Trading Leonard Floyd, Latavius Murray, and David Edwards would get me Isaiah Simmons from the Giants, which is an upgrade right now. And probably an upgrade that I want to take. I'm just trying to figure out, is there any way I can get something better than a fifth round pick? Like the Giants second ideally would be really, really nice. And it's close. Yeah, there's something to be done here. We just can't trade any more players after three, so it would have to be draft picks. But I would gladly trade a four to move up for that two. And I would add a five and a six to get it done if this is not accepted, but it is. So Leonard Floyd, Latavius Murray, David Edwards, a four and a five gets me Isaiah Simmons, who's a big upgrade at right outside linebacker right now, and a second round pick this year as well. And I will also say because we are trying to win this season as well. It might make sense to, and this way we can start Osiris Torrance as well, by the way. It might make sense to just hold on to Von Miller and try to make a run because he is a 90 overall player right now. Very, very good. So if we are trying to win, which we are, I think it's in our best interest to just hold on to the players we have and see what happens. Yeah, I think we just kind of keep the team the same and try to make a run. We might make a move at the deadline for a player that can actually help us right now, but we're going to see what happens first. Six foot four, 217 pound receiver at the top of the board, projected to go at number one overall. My first thought is this is the like massive six foot four, six foot five generational type receiver, and there's actually one under him, Barry Tucker, at over 230. Like the Calvin Johnson type build. That's my first thought on those guys. Obviously, Calvin Johnson was closer to 230 than 217. But both could be very, very good quarterback. Obviously, wouldn't be in play for us at all. Even though, of course, there are a few here at the top of the board. I would like be in favor of moving up to get a superstar X-Factor receiver if there clearly is one available. The strengths of the class, wide receiver, quarterback, cornerback... Two positions we could certainly 
potentially use, depending on how you feel about the corners. Could move somebody back to safety. Taron Johnson is a good nickel, but I don't know how long Rasul Douglas is going to be around. I don't know how long Taron Johnson is going to be around, to be fair. Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer on the back end. We could definitely look to uh, get some fresh faces in there. So these receivers, I'm sure, are going to be very, very good. And we could be moving all the way up. Mid-season mark, we are 5-2. and two. Certainly not sellers at the trade deadline by any means. But my main focus is how can we actually improve and get better? We have the number six defense. Bucks are at the top of the league, by the way, and convincingly so. Our offense is really struggling. And I think a lot of that could be because of our poor offensive line. Cyrus Torrance, of course, does have star development. We need a right tackle probably over Spencer Brown. The rest of the team really isn't too bad. Defensively, I don't really know where we could upgrade right now. Like, I see outside linebacker, but I think Terrell Bernard is just fine there. So it really comes down to offense, in my opinion. Left guard, right tackle. Connor McGovern's under contract. We don't necessarily need to upgrade, although it would be easy to. And the reason I'm favoring Osiris Torrance, younger, better development trait. Similar overall, but right tackle over Spencer Brown could be the way to do it. He's 25 years old, still room to develop, of course, but if I can trade him and replace him with somebody better, that's what I want to do. And the offers are not great to start, as I guess would be expected. Ooh, I think I actually just might do this or something similar. Spencer Brown, Kyir Elam, we're just going to cut bait. Rob Havenstein is a big upgrade at right tackle right now. Is this his final year under deal? I know he has two years left under his contract. So if we can get him and also a second round pick from the Rams, I would give up something else to get that. I would be massively in favor for that. So they need a corner. We're giving them one. They need a center. We could definitely trade Ryan Bates. That actually could work out really well. And then we could trade maybe... I know we have a fourth round pick. I could move next season... Don't know if I want to give up my third. Two sixes is not really going to move the needle very much. So I think maybe that future four I was talking about could be a good start to just see where we are. And I've backed out. Oh, you idiot. I think it will have to be a current third. So we'll try that. And it's just not quite there. A second this year might be just a little bit too much. Maybe a second next year. The value on that's going to be slightly lower. And then maybe I could trade a future three. So it's a slight trade up. And we're also getting better at right tackle. Two sixes is just not going to be enough. It is really close though. So instead of the two sixes, maybe I do one. And then a four next year. This is almost surely accepted. And it is. So big upgrade at right tackle. Get a second round pick next year as well. Trading some picks in order to do it. Including a third and a fourth next year. Ryan Bates, Kyrie Elam, and Spencer Brown are headed to the Rams, and we get a bit of a band-aid at right tackle, right? I don't know if he's a long-term solution, but he's going to be good at least for the next two years, and maybe even a bit longer than that. I think running back could also be a position we look to upgrade. Just James Cook is developable, only 23 years old, star dev. In Madden, typically the 90-plus overall running backs perform really, really well, and the offenses are just not the same without them. However, I don't want to just get rid of James Cook. I want to develop him, and we're just going to end up holding on. So I'm not trading Von Miller. I'm not trading Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer. I want to make a Super Bowl run. We need those players to do it. And right now, our cap room for 2024 is negative, negative 14 million. Contracts like Von Miller are getting really expensive. So uh, again, maybe we should have traded him, but... I'm trying to make the Super Bowl run, and I would obviously trade losing a few players, who are good, by the way. We have a breakout quarterback challenge for a superstar X-Factor 90-plus overall QB. Interesting. Uh, I would trade losing a couple players for a Super Bowl. I would. And we actually missed the playoffs. Nine and eight. What was our second half of the season like? We were like six and two at one point. Two losses in the first four weeks. Three losses in a row, two losses in a row. It's not that good. Really just an all-time collapse from a sorry group of players, unfortunately. I tried to go for it all, 
and we didn't come close. Josh Allen didn't really throw for that many yards rushing. James Cook was held under three and a half yards per carry. That is a problem when you're getting close to 300 attempts. Receiving Stefan Diggs uh, did go over 1,000. Kincaid and Knox, I mean, combined were great. And then defensively, Isaiah Simmons had 140 tackles, 10 for loss, a sack, and two picks. That's a great, highly productive year. 22 TFLs for Ed Oliver. We got pressure. 18 sacks for Miller, 10 for Russo, 8.5 for Oliver. Even Daquan Jones joined the party. Our offense just sucked. That needs to get better. Looks like we're probably going to lose Gabe Davis and maybe some others. I'd prefer not to lose Isaiah Simmons, but... I don't know how we're going to be able to keep them. Cowboys and Ravens in the Super Bowl, the Vinny Testaverde Bowl. Deion Sanders is another one. I'm sure there are more. Did Paul Kruger ever get to the Cowboys? I don't think so. No, he didn't. He was a Raven. He was a Brown. Might have been a Saint, actually, as well. I don't think ever a Cowboy. 2023 season recap. I'm sure there are more, too. I'm not going to name everybody. Dak Prescott wins MVP and Super Bowl MVP as the Cowboys win the Super Bowl. Now, the good news about waiting for Von Miller, and even though he's going to rest heavily here, the good news about waiting on him is that the penalty is probably less than it would have been last year. So he is down to an 86 overall. The penalty is slightly lower, I guess. We would clear money overall. And you have seen some of these players have regressed heavily, like Jordan Poyer's down to an 83, Micah Hyde's down to an 83. This is the problem that you get when you don't trade these guys. But I tried to make a Super Bowl run, and we couldn't even make the playoffs. Isaiah Simmons is also up to superstar development. I can't even get a franchise tag in because I can't even offer. So what we're probably going to end up doing is letting these guys walk. Ugh, brutal. Letting a lot of the team walk. Trading... Von Miller, maybe somebody else, and then seeing if we can re-sign anybody, anybody in like actual free agency. It is what it is. Obviously, the smarter move for like the longevity of this team would have been to trade players and not actually try to win the Super Bowl that year, but we were good up to a point, and uh, I wanted to go for it. We just had a crazy, terrible second half. That happens sometimes. Now we have 21 mil in available salary cap. How does that work? Is it officially the new league year now? Well, some of these guys have to get moved. Can't trade Deion Dawkins or Mitch Morse, probably. Naheem Hines is just going to be a straight cut. Like, we could try to trade him away. I don't know what the trade value is going to be. His Why does his player head look so massive did you guys see that or small i mean the opposite of massive naheem hines out here looking like beetlejuice why does it look so small anyway he's cut the giants are offering aziz ojolari and the cardinals are offering bj ojolari bj ojolari has actually had a very nice rookie season by the way his pass rush win rate is some of the highest or i think maybe the highest of any rookie pass rusher fun fact but what are we actually looking for in a trade? Nico Collins only has normal dev, so I really am not too interested in that. Okay, I am trading Von Miller and number 17 to Chicago for number three. Didn't really expect for that to be accepted straight up, but it was. And I'm not that mad at it, I guess. I mean, we moved up to number three in the draft. So maybe we could have got a bit more, but I mean, they didn't accept a first next year in Von Miller. So I think that was probably the best thing we could have offered. So we've moved up significantly in the draft, giving us a lot of flexibility. Uh, I might prefer to have another first round pick. Honestly, Jordan Poyer probably needs to be traded last year of his deal now. Didn't win the Super Bowl. We tried to. Taron Johnson probably needs to be moved. It's a good corner class. We can replace him, I think. Milano Bernard, we can keep. Darian Beavers is on the Bills now. It's not true, is it? No, it's not. Yeah, he's still on the Giants. I uh, <laughs> I thought he was, but you never know with you know some of these guys dealing with injury or practice squad limitations. We have so many expiring contracts. This team is imploding. It's not in a great spot. Okay, a lot happening here. 
Taron Johnson, Dawson Knox, Jordan Poyer, a second round pick this year, number 49. We still have 57. A third and a, oh, a third is in 2026, and a sixth this year is headed to the Colts. We are getting a top 10 pick from Indianapolis. We've uh, kind of shed some dead weight a little bit. Still have a lot to do to re-sign the players we want to re-sign. But I think that's all I can really do for now. I don't want to get rid of Greg Rousseau. I don't want to get rid of Deion Dawkins. We have as much money as we were able to make. And I really would like to bring back Isaiah Simmons. That's kind of my number one focus right now. And you'll see if we're able to do that. Three teams offering him. He wants to be back in Orchard Park, New York. Home of the Buffalo Bills. And it seems like we're going to be able to do that. So I changed the year. I made it four years. Uh, took the money down slightly. Is there anyone else we let go to free agency that I really want back? Gabe Davis, but he doesn't want to be here. I'm not paying him $15 million a year, especially when we're about to go out and draft a really good receiver, I think. Connor Williams, hook him, of course. Greg Newsom here. I feel like he always is. Didn't make it this time. Maybe he's probably next season, actually. Gabe Davis is headed to the Lions. I don't know why that just feels right. Josh Allen to Tennessee, staying in the division. And tell me Isaiah Simmons is not signed yet. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. He's headed to the Texans. Uh, nothing's going right for me here today. Good stuff. Is there any pivot? Not really. JOK isn't going to be in free agency till next year. Actually, there is a pivot. Willie Gay. Come on down, Willie Gay. And we signed Willie Gay. There's a positive there. So this is what I'm saying. Marco Miner and Barry Tucker are both true top five talents in the class. We know for sure. Marco Miner has A catch and traffic, or excuse me, not catch and traffic, action traffic. His action traffic is an A. That's got to be pretty good. A catching, B deep route running, A release. He's a really solid athlete, although I would say not like generational when you look at his actual ratings there. Although, if you saw this performance of a guy that's six foot four, 217 pounds, you'd probably freak out because it is insane. It's just his speed only says good for his rating, which, I mean, it's, it's not amazing, but he's definitely a really, really solid athlete. Traits are fantastic. What about Barry Tucker? Barry Tucker has worse catch in traffic. Same catching, same deep route running, same release. So very similar players. Same overall, or same, uh, not same overall, same uh, age is the word for that. He also has, yeah, it says action traffic. Now he only has solid speed, but elite strength. I would lean... I think I would lean Marco Miner. Now, Marco Miner is not expected to go until pick number three to me. So I don't even have to trade up. And then the other receiver is not expected to go number six to me. Not expected to go until each of my picks is extremely convenient. However, I don't know that we would need both. That's the thing. We already have Stefan Diggs. Now, there was a running back that I made a focus player. Gerald Ridley has potential. Six foot, 228, A ball carry version, A break tackle, only C carrying. Has good speed, which is good. Like I'll take four, four speed for a running back all day. Elite acceleration, elite jumping. If his juke move and spin move are quite good, and particularly the juke move, we might just end up with a running back. He's an elusive back that I think is gonna have quite high trucking because he is 228 pounds. Or maybe I even saw it already. A to C. No, I, I think it's going to end up being high. It's an expectation, not a given. So we'll see what his true talent ends up being or get closer to it. And then I might just end up with a running back at some point. And he was supposed to go to the Chargers at 12, right? All right, we'll see what happens. So I don't think we have to trade up at all. Hopefully it just goes the way it's expected to, and we'll have exactly what we want at number three overall as a tackle and a quarterback go at one and two. And we are going to draft Marco Minor from Notre Dame, and hopefully he's not a minor addition, but a major addition. And 
just pretend the E in his last name is an O to make that joke work. And it, you know what, it works anyway. Um, he's got a lot of experience working in a coal mine. That's how he got this last name. He's tough. And now he's going to be a Buffalo Bill. 92 speed, 99 jumping, 93 change direction, 87 agility, 90 acceleration. I think we probably should be good at receiver. Now, the other receiver looks quite good. That's my only hesitation. He looks awesome. But do we need a third receiver? I can't get over that Dalton Kincaid picture, man. Uh, I don't know that we do need another receiver. That's the thing. Is three really good ones overkill? We need safety desperately. Terrell Bernard is going to move over to the middle linebacker or something. We're going to be fine. We need defensive line as Ed Oliver's up to superstar dev. Edge is super important. We could still draft a corner, move somebody back to safety. Yeah, the defense is too bad to take a receiver at six. It just is. Although, am I considering a running back at, you know, 12 or 14 or whatever it was? I mean, I might. How good is he? Have him up to 90% scouted. Same athleticism. He's got a juke move and a spin move. I mean, this is a potential generational type player. Uh, I can't pass on that when running back is a potential need of this team. And you could definitely make an argument that running back is the reason our offense was so bad this past season. It's just, it's really difficult for me to sit back and watch a generational player potentially go at a position of need. I am trading back. Okay, this has a lot of moving parts, so stay with me. Matt Milano, just have to bite the bullet and trade one of our aging players who is good to be better long-term. I should have done it and just not played for a Super Bowl in year one. I'm going to do it now and not let the same thing happen to 30-year-old Matt Milano, as good as he is. Deontay Hardy, also on the move. I am trading back from number six. I'm trading a second-round pick next year and the year after that, as well as a third-round pick this year to get... Number 13 from Chicago, a second round pick, a first round pick next year, and a third round pick next year. Again, a lot of moving parts there, but it should help us be better long term. As we now are on the clock at number 13, and I do anticipate this being the running back if he is available, and he is. Gerald Ridley from UW, welcome to Buffalo. 40-inch vertical jump as well is crazy, but A, ball carry revision, A, break tackle, A, juke move, A, spin move, A, stiff arm, B, trucking. He looks amazing, and he is now a Buffalo Bill. 92 speed, 95 acceleration, agility close to 90. 86 change of direction, so not too bad at 230 pounds. He should be very, very good. And does this make James Cook a bit more expendable? Yeah, maybe so, maybe. You know, I've also found, and you guys know this if you've watched the rebuilds, it's not too difficult to find really good linebackers down the board. This is an interesting one. Only D block shed, but the rest looks awesome. And elite speed. Ian Lloyd. I mean, he's definitely a pass coverage archetype player. That's for sure with that D uh, block shed, but... Could be a really solid player for us. I like the look of Markel Northrup as well. B block shed, C pursuit, C tackle, A zone coverage. Pretty good, great speed. Yeah, he's definitely pretty good. And Bart McLeod from South Carolina might just be a better player uh, than Lloyd, who we just checked out a minute ago. Although, it's very close. Unfortunately, there's no close to 400 pound defensive tackle, so we can't get like an easy steal at that position which of course I was hoping to. I think Dexter Hurst could end up being quite good. I just think we're going to miss out on him. Undersized defensive end at only 253 pounds. It would make more sense for a rush outside linebacker, but still does look good. Just trying to set up the way the rest of this draft is going to go. I'm like, do we want to trade up? Do we not? I don't think we can really trade up. I think we're just going to wait to see what gets available to us in round number two. Now, don't need quarterback, obviously, but corner, safety, linebacker, defensive end, all of these things are in play. Two second round picks, really need to make the most of these. Definitely have to hit on a, a steal. And uh, even though we know this receiver might be a steal, doesn't really fit what we need, what I want to do. 
So we're going to have to look elsewhere. Wish you were more athletic. Only B power moves. Could be a decent player. I'm going to pass. Ooh, Kendrick Snell looks like he could be a steal. Really well-rounded. Is that the move? Would Philly need it safety? It's definitely near the top of my, my ideas right now. Although a power rush defensive tackle with elite speed, with B finesse moves, A tackle, B to D block shed, I think might be slightly more valuable to me. Greg Carradine looks really good as a receiver as well. I just, I don't know. I think maybe we take a corner down the board. Lamont Clifford actually looks great. That'll be my pivot if I can't uh, get that safety to drop to us, which I don't really have any control over. So we'll just hope he does. But Artie Hughes will be my pick here. I value him more than the safety, I think. And he seems like he could end up paying off for us. 91 strength is great. 79 speed is amazing. 84 acceleration could be an instant starter next to Ed Oliver. So we're going to hope the safety I like makes it to the end of the second round here. If he doesn't, it's an easy pivot to a corner or maybe a linebacker. This receiver is still sticking around and a bunch of receivers look pretty good. So the safety is almost certainly off the board, right? Again, that's fine. We made our decision and I think we're going to be happy with it because some of those corners look pretty good and especially the ones that can play in zone coverage. I'll just move him to safety. So Lamont Clifford, man-to-man -man guy. He could probably stick a corner for us. Great speed, elite acceleration, ran 4 to 8 at his pro day. This is a steal. Lamont Clifford, welcome to the Bills. Only normal development, but 94 speed and acceleration. Great athlete. We know the attributes are going to be good as well. Kind of surprised to see only normal development there. He looks fantastic. And I probably need to trade up for a linebacker. So we'll uh, we'll see if a few go off the board. And I'm going to trade up into the third round, I think, at some point. I'm in between Markel Northrup and Ian Lloyd. Whichever one goes off the board first, I'll trade up for the next pick for the other one. I think that's a good way to do it. I'm really 50-50. I could go either way. So this is a good way to do it and get the most value where I don't have to trade all the way up to a spot. Uh, and... The trade-up spot's going to end up being here. We're going to take Ian Lloyd. Mitch Morse, final year of his deal. This is not even going to let me do it. Why Why did that... Why was that an offer? I like the idea, though, because I think Mitch Morse wouldn't be too difficult to replace. Okay, we're going to trade Mitch Morse, Tommy Doyle, Reggie Gilliam. Doyle and Gilliam are just for cap purposes, and we don't use a fullback anyway. A third, a four, and a five it gets us a third, a second, and a third in 2024, 2025, and 2026 from the Commanders. So we trade up to this pick, and we're going to use this to draft a linebacker. I definitely think we got better in some ways, worse than others. It's like It kind of looks like it might have been a lateral move with a lot of what we did in this draft. However, we are going to be better long-term because of it. just want to check one thing. Is Trent Steven somebody I missed out on? I think Ian Lloyd is just better. Going from Miami to Buffalo... You are in for a change. Hidden Dev, 86 speed, 88 acceleration, 89 agility. Not bad. And 69 strength. Nice. Draft recap, how'd we do? I expect pretty well. And we maybe even did better than pretty well. 283 overall players. Marco Miner is an 83. It's like bottom tier of generational range, maybe. Not guaranteed to have X-Factor here, but he's... Fantastic. 94, spectacular catch, great route running, great release, great change of direction, great traits, great, great prospect. Gerald Ridley from Washington's also an 83 with 99 juke move. I'm thinking we got the generational 99 a juke move archetype. That's my bet. He's got the aggressive possession and run after catch trait, fight for yards trait, he is amazing. And he's going to have to start over James Cook right away, obviously. Just couldn't pass on him. Artie Hughes is 75. That's a really good draft pick, usually. But we got him down the board. 78 power moves, block shed, and finesse moves really aren't too bad. Really, really nice player. The corner, who looked like a bust because of normal dev, whoa, 78 overall. With 82 man, 78 zone. Tackling's a bit low. He probably is not a great candidate to move to safety, in my opinion. Probably will just leave him at corner, but is a really good prospect. Ian Lloyd's a 71. Not much down the board, but...
But um, this draft class seemed like it was loaded. Barry Tucker was a 79, so not in the same stratosphere as Marco, uh, Marco Minor. There's another running back, 78 overall, amazing, but not in the same stratosphere as Gerald Ridley. Lamont Clifford was a top five player overall wise in the entire draft. We, I know we didn't get a good dev trade on him, but we dominated this draft. Kendrick Snell, the safety, by the way, ends up being a 75 overall. Looks really solid. Better man than zone. We drafted the 75 overall defensive tackle over him. Still a decision I feel good about, and he only has star depth, so I feel even better about it. All right, so we have some notable holes on the team. Obviously, we traded away Mitch Morse, and then defensively, linebacker, I got to move some guys around. We have Anthony Barr now. It's not great, but we need an edge rusher terribly, and one of these corners has to move back to safety. I'm thinking maybe Christian Benford. He's got higher zone coverage significantly. Tackling is not too bad. Speed's not amazing. He seems like a natural move to free safety. We signed Mike Edwards to fill out the roster, but it's not amazing, obviously. Still some very obvious holes on this team. And then Benford, his block shedding is real bad. I need tackling to move up quite a bit. So run support, I think, makes the most sense here. Okay, so safety is going to be fine, I guess. Edge is a big need and center. It's really... Just those two positions that need a big time upgrade before we do anything this season. But I'm not really sure who's going to be available in free agency. Probably nobody particularly good. We'd use a third running back as well. Justin Britt is the best option. That's not great. And we can't even afford him. If we could afford Yannick Ngakwe or Randy Gregory, those wouldn't be awful options. Not great, obviously. But we can't because we're eating the penalty of trading Von Miller, which had to be done. Had to be done for sustained success. I can't, you know, pay Von Miller, who's going to end up being like a 60 overall, $30 million. That would just be absolutely ridiculous. So we'll get more money next season. But right now we're in a bad spot. Ian Lloyd, strong camp. Love to see that. He's going to get a plus five to play rec. That's going to be big for the young rookie. I guess he's 23. He's not super young. And I know that seems crazy, but it's not like, you know, he's going to develop the way a 20 or 21 year old would. It's going to be slightly worse, but still in a pretty good spot. Got to be run stopper. He's going to play up to a 74 overall, go up to a 73 overall. True overall. And block shedding's bad, but pursuit, tackle, everything there on the rise. Awareness was already pretty good. Now that play rec got a big boost. I mean, he's looking... Pretty solid. We scored 14 points week one and three in week two. This offense is brutal. Obviously, trading a center is going to hurt, but it is hurting a lot. I mean, our team is incapable of scoring points. We got to make a change. We're about to find out if Marco Minor has at least superstar development. Probably. Nope, not yet, because we're not going to get him up to an 85 overall. Upgraded playmaker instead, which I think is a good upgrade for him. But, yeah... Don't know yet. We're going to find out next week, probably. I bet it's at least Superstar, but we'll see. I don't know how to clear cap space with the current players we have, and I need an upgrade at center really, really badly. What we might need to do is restructure some of these contracts and also extend some players as well. We have $66 million in 2025. Rousseau is going to be coming back, I would bet, for sure. Definitely want to re-sign him if he's interested in career win percentage because that might only go down depending on how the season goes. So Rousseau is back in a long-term deal. Rasul Douglas, I probably want back on a two-year extension. And he is back. Okay, things are going pretty well so far. Deion Dawkins is a, it just extremely important. Three-year deal, about 15, 16 million per year. And then it's really just Rob Havenstein, who I do probably want back. Yeah, two-year deal, but it's a little bit expensive for my taste. So he might be somebody that gets traded, but it doesn't really make sense to. He's too good, and we're not paying him anything. So we're just going to go ahead and keep that how it is. We need a center. And Josh Allen's contract's only going to get more expensive, by the way. So we are just in a not-so-great spot until, until, and this is a big one, um... What am I saying? What is until? Until the salary cap penalties go away, which is next season. All right, we're going to clear a bit of cap space by restructuring Tredavious White. 
That at least should let me get a center. I prefer to trade for one probably rather than signing one. Yalta Froholt is, I guess, available. I don't know that we can actually afford him. How is that possible? Our cap room is nothing. Luke Fortner is still an upgrade, I guess. We are trading Shy Smith, Connor McGovern, and a fifth to get rookie Mitchell Agnew at left guard and Yalta Froholt from the Cardinals. So it's an upgrade to our offensive line overall. We're taking a slight downgrade, downgrading from McGovern to the rookie, even though the rookie has hidden development. So probably not really a downgrade long-term for us at all. So new starter at left guard, new starter at center. The offensive line is definitely way better now. Oh boy, is his pass protecting bad. But that's really the story of our entire offensive line. So I'm not doing Josh Allen any favors up to this point. Still don't know the dev traits of the running back or the receiver. And then defensively, ooh, okay. Superstar dev for Artie Hughes. Definitely a fantastic pick. Way better than the, the uh, safety that we thought about drafting. And then linebacker looks still pretty good. Don't know the dev trait of Ian Lloyd yet. I know I need a defensive end. I have no way of getting one right now. We're in three at the midseason mark. We have the number 13 offense and number 12 defense. We're just fine, which isn't good enough. 25 million in salary cap space to re-sign uh, Rob Havenstein if we want to, which I guess I will. I'd like a one-year deal though, as opposed to a two-year deal. I'm not giving him two years at 17 million per year. That's just a ridiculous situation. It's too much money for him. And especially considering he's going to regress, I'm just going to wait until the offseason. I'm not paying him 17 mil per year. In fact, I probably should just trade him, but I'm not going to. Marco Miner, superstar X-Factor. Deep route running needs to go up in a big way. I'm going to upgrade Playmaker, though. Still doesn't get him up to an 85 overall. Hoping for medium route running here. We don't get it, but we do get plus one speed and plus two catching. Not a bad upgrade. Or a short route running would have been good, too, to get that 80+. plus. Medium was actually the best one. I, I misread that or forgot quickly. But it doesn't really make too much of a difference. We got a good boost anyway. Gerard, uh, not Gerard. I keep wanting to call him Gerard. Gerald Ridley also has Superstar X Factor. Not really a huge surprise there after seeing the 99 Juke. Yeah, he is pretty amazing. Can't get Freight Train yet. Freight Train I like quite a bit. We'll do first one free. And I don't think it matters a ton right now because we're not using him. It's in simulation. But yeah, he's looking very, very good. Definitely the right move to draft him, I think for sure. And then defensively, Lloyd just has star dev, but that's still pretty good. This makes me wish we had another really high pick. Might have to move up for one. Denario Smith has A finesse moves and A power moves. Well, we need a defensive end. Seems like it's an okay, uh, okay class to need one. There's really only one guy that looks quite good. But we probably should try to get him. And we do end up making the playoffs, going 12-5, and five, winning the division. But still having to play in the wild card. Josh Allen, same touchdown to interception ratio or similar. It, it might have been maybe slightly more touchdowns last year. It was very close, and then maybe nine picks. Threw for more yards, though. Rushing. Gerald Ridley still is not at that 90-plus. Uh, well, he is now, but I'm, I'm saying throughout the year. So... Those guys typically don't run very well. However, now that he's 90 plus, his next season's gonna be fantastic. So really wouldn't worry about it. 17 touchdowns, pretty incredible for a rookie. Stefan Diggs was amazing. Dalton Kincaid had a great year. Marco Miner didn't really do a whole lot. Like Khalil Shakir was incredibly comparable. And then defensively, Willie Gay with a ton of tackles, four for loss, although 18 for loss for Ed Oliver. 11 sacks for the rookie, Artie Hughes. Might be good enough for defensive rookie of the year. Rousseau at eight sacks. We're just missing that other big time edge rusher. And hopefully in the draft, we're able to solve that issue. I think we actually have the Bears first round pick though. So we might actually end up having a pretty high draft pick here. And we'll see if we can beat the 86 overall Colts in the wild card. Could be a tough one. And we are out already. Not ideal. Well, it makes sense why Artie Hughes is playing so well. And why he has two skill points, one for each of his personalities here. He's basically like two players in one. And I think he did win Defensive Rookie of the Year. He sure did. Yeah, it looks ridiculous on the screen. We're going to upgrade Power Rusher. Hopefully get him up to an 80 overall. And he is looking very, very good. And is up to a true 80 overall Power Rusher upgraded 
Get an ability slot as well, obviously. Yeah, he's going to end up being a beast. One-year deal for Rob Havenstein. He's going to test free agency. I'm just going to franchise tag him. And that actually puts us into the negative. But that's fine. That's totally fine. Didn't have to re-sign anybody else anyway. We are going to cut some guys in order to create some cap space, though. But it's really all about trading up and getting that defensive end. Well, I, actually, I guess I don't know where the Bears have us uh, picking. So maybe we don't necessarily trade up. I can't do anything in free agency, so we're going to have to build through the draft, which I'm totally fine with doing. But it's going to need to be that defensive end, potentially an interior offensive lineman, potentially a defensive back. Denario Smith is going to be really good. Probably a top five talent in this class. That's probably the one. I just want to know these true uh, talents for the defensive ends, probably. And we will operate off that. There is a center that could be worth drafting. Probably not the smartest move in the first round, but it, I don't know. If he's good enough, maybe it would be. What is his potential or what is his uh, scouting progress here? 50%. So I can't know his true talent. We're going to leave it. But we don't have a top five pick. Denario Smith expected to go at number four. Where's our pick? 10. That's actually not that far away. Ooh, N24. We have another first round pick. So the center actually could very much be in play. He's expected to go to us at 24. We're trading number 10, a two in 2027, and a four for the number four pick. So a slight trade up. I guess I didn't, I didn't see what the defensive end's true talent was, but it is top five. So he's certainly going to be worth it. Nicholas Nixon, which is quite the name is a round one talent, which is actually quite good for an outside linebacker. Decent athlete. I mean, A play rec, awareness, power moves, pursuit, impact blocking, if you like that. And what is the other defensive end? Round one. So we're definitely getting the best overall player that we can take. We just don't know if the dev trait's going to be as good. 6'3", 277, 22 years old, A finesse moves, A power moves, A tackle, C block shed. Very amazing athlete. Yeah, he's going to be sick. He should get to number four. I guess it's not guaranteed, but he should get to number four. Although, I don't know if I trust it entirely. I'm going to try to trade up one spot with the Steelers. Just one spot. It shouldn't be expensive at all. All right, I'm trading a bunch of late round picks to move up one spot. Basically giving the Steelers a whole draft. But I just want to make sure we get this guy. And Denario Smith, of course, is still available at three. He is officially a Buffalo Bill with 88 strength, 83 speed, 91 acceleration, and a head that weighs probably 270 of his 277 total pounds. Instant starter. Round one, pick 24. Is the center available? He is. I haven't really looked at him a ton. So I'm not sure if this really is going to make sense for us. He's like a, a fine athlete. Probably not worth drafting. But we do need a center. Kincaid, by the way, up to superstar dev. Center remains a need. We need more depth. Defensively, we just addressed edge. DB is a need. Because right now, Clifford, who is our third corner, is expected to play strong safety. We need corner as well or safety. I mean, this guard looks about as good as the center does. I don't know. I don't know how to play this. Could be some good safeties with our next pick. I'm not really sure. We're kind of gambling either way. What about corner? Corner is not great. Linebacker down the board could be. I like the look of Elliot Tyler. Okay, we're making a big trade. Havenstein, this first round pick, two second round picks. For Darnell Wright, it's a good trade for us. Also, we're swapping second round picks, getting an extra one, and a fourth round pick this year as well. So, a trade back, but we're getting a younger and will be better long-term right tackle. We've made a lot of trades with the Bears in this one. That's for sure. But that pick just made more sense for us to lock down right tackle with Darnell Wright. And I just didn't feel comfortable drafting either offensive lineman in that spot. So I think trading for Darnell Wright was better. Center, we're going to figure out at some point, obviously. That also frees up some money for us, by the way, which I think was fairly important. This tackle actually looks pretty good. Aaron Sabin, 
Not very strong, but other than that, looks great. Lance Colbert looks like a really solid safety prospect worth drafting at this point. Uh, play rec's a bit low. Other than that, looks good. B block should be awareness, B zone coverage, B tackle. Good athlete, 21 years old. And this makes sure we don't have to move a corner to safety. Lance Colbert, uh, unfortunately, only has normal development. So I don't love that. Trading a two and a four this year for Clark Phillips and Nick Matthews from the Falcons. Nick Matthews was the center that they drafted that seems to be pretty good. 76 overall with star dev, obviously pretty young if he was drafted in this rebuild. So now we have a young upgrade at center and our offensive line finally feels about finalized. Depth, still kind of an issue for us. But defensively, of course, you drafted a safety. Getting Clark Phillips gives us more depth at cornerback. Defensive end's fine. Terrell Bernard actually got up to star dev, by the way. I didn't even notice that. And, you know, I like where we are right now. With this second round pick, maybe I'll take a linebacker. It's our last pick of the draft, so we have to make a count. We're going to go Elliot Tyler. Double first name kind of uh, scares me. But A play rec, A pursuit, A tackle, B zone coverage, B man coverage, elite speed, and normal development. Man, what a special teamer he's going to make. Let's see how he did. Denario Smith is a 78 overall. That's really, really solid for a defensive end. He's got 78 finesse moves, 77 power moves. Real strong, really good athlete. Pretty happy with this pickup. Lance Colbert's a 74. Elliot Tyler's a 73. Like, they're decent, but not amazing. And uh, we'll see what this draft actually looks like. An 81 overall quarterback. Darren Buckner out of Texas Tech goes to the Broncos. And 99 throw power. Man, what are the odds of two Texas Tech quarterbacks in the league having 99 throw power? Nuts. Nuts. A good guard went at 13. Earl Miller's safety was a 76 overall. A couple of good safeties, but they went ahead of my second round pick. This wasn't an amazing draft by any means, but a couple of really good players, obviously, at the top. Where was that center? Because that could end up being, like, my big regret, but it seems like it's not going to be. Yeah, I'm getting to be actually quite glad that we didn't draft him. I have not seen him yet. 73 overall was the 28th pick of the draft. He looks pretty good, actually. Run and pass block finesse are not especially high, but everything else looks pretty good. And his dev trait is only star. We made the right move. I mean, this team does look pretty great now. It's just safety could be a problem. Should I just trade a pick for a really good safety? Might be worth it. Linebacker, eh, it's not amazing. But I think getting a really good safety could be really good for our team. Jair Brown might, I mean, we can't trade for anyone from the uh, 49ers because they never have any cap space. So that's not feasible. Quan Martin. I mean, I don't really want to offer something. I want them to offer me. I hate this screen. This screen is super annoying. Yeah, get me here. Just, what do you want for him? A third? No. <laughs> Sorry. Well, wow, finally a death trade upgrade. It's Dalton Kincaid who goes up to Superstar X Factor. All right. We are 6-1 at the midseason mark. Development traits have been revealed. It's Superstar Dev for the rookie defensive end. Offensively, not much has changed, as you know. I did sign Chuba Hubbard. I didn't mention that. But defensively, we have Demario Smith here. And Denario Smith has Superstar Dev up to an 81 overall. 83 finesse moves. He was like even split power and finesse. And after training camp, I just decided to upgrade finesse moves. I know he looks like... He'd be power guy based on the size of his neck and head. Uh, just insanely large. But at week eight, we have not that many players to resign. It's Trey White, James Cook, Terrell Bernard, Christian Benford. And that's kind of it in terms of players that actually will make an impact. Tredavious White is an obvious resign on like a two-year contract probably. And Trey White is back. But then we only have 40 million to bring back everybody else. So do we want to allocate 5 mil to James Cook? We probably don't. He does want to be back though. Maybe I can just extend it and take the money down. I could give him a little over four and a half. Don't try to exploit my passion for this franchise. If you're passionate about the franchise, just say yes. Three-year deal, uh, deal for Terrell Bernard. It's just too much money. 
Honestly. Do I try and trade one of these guys right, uh, right now? Christian Benford, I think, is reasonable. But he wants more money. It's probably smarter to trade these guys. Just don't think I'm going to. They're just too impactful for right now. And, I mean, Bernard's going to be 27 years old. At maybe an 80 overall. Paying him close to 10 mil per year. That doesn't work for me. And we went 16 and 1. Number one offense, number three defense in points per game. This is what I was waiting to see. I think we lost the one game early in the year to the Chiefs, and we're going to be playing them again. Of course, it would be the Chiefs at Arrowhead, right? But all of the other games, all wins, and a lot of them in convincing fashion by double digits. Two scores, three scores in some cases. I mean, we dominated the Bucks to end the year. Okay, well, this is quite the year. 36 touchdowns to zero interceptions for Josh Allen as he throws for 4,400 yards rushing. Gerald Ridley starting to find it over four yards per carry, 1,200 yards rushing, 18 touchdowns. I keep upgrading power back when I can. He's up to uh, 95. Elusive back as well. Probably would be at a 99 already if I didn't upgrade power back, but I want to make him a little bit more well-rounded, especially better in short yardage situations. Khalil Shakir dominated in the slot. Kincaid had a great year. Marco Miner was really good. Stefan Diggs had a nice season. Overall, we just spread the football around. Ridley did a good job out of the backfield as well. Willie Gay, 121 tackles, 11 for the loss, two and a half sacks, three picks. That's defensive player of the year type stuff. Ed Oliver, 18 TFLs, 14 and a half sacks from Greg Rousseau would lead the way, nine. Sacks for Ed Oliver, seven and a half for Artie Hughes. Denario Smith, only four and a half. Underwhelming. And it's an AFC East division matchup. It's kind of fun. Supposed to be a blizzard, apparently. I'd prefer if it were not. You know, we're a tough team that can run the football. Maybe it would work in our favor. Plus one speed for Rousseau. I think if I don't even click it, it's just not going to be a playoff blizzard. So maybe I just don't even click it. I'll tell you though, if we do end up winning the Super Bowl, I'm going to try to run it back because I like the way our team is set up right now. And I feel like our long-term success is, I mean, it's going to be snowing. Our long-term success is in a really good spot right now, or it looks that way, of course. And all we would have to do is bring, or all we'd have to do to keep this team together is bring back James Cook, but not really. Terrell Bernard and Christian Benford, if that's it, it's going to be easy, and we're only going to get better. Stefan Diggs might regress a bit. Allen certainly wouldn't. Who else? Ed Oliver, probably not going to regress. Trey White maybe regresses slightly. We're in a good spot. We're in a really good spot overall. And we're down to the Jets, 7-3. to three. Not a very high-scoring game here in the Blizzard so far, but the Jets seem intent on scoring every single time they touch the ball, and we are down by 11. Our offense, would you guys like to, to show up at all? might jump in here for a drive we've already turned over the football that safety's kind of hiding white jersey shouldn't be allowed here with the snow coming down and that's unreal they got bumped i'm just having an incredibly tough time seeing the defenders oh man josh allen is struggling here in the playoffs maybe khalil shakir over the middle gets open here we'll check down all right that's open to kincaid yeah, we got to ramp up here. Get into gear. A touchdown really gets us back into the game. A turnover, and we'll count punts in there as well, would be devastating. Let's get in the end zone here. Oh, they're blitzing. Kincaid open, and it's a touchdown. We needed that desperately. I mean, the defender was all over Kincaid there. That was actually McLeod, and we had a chance to draft. But we're able to find Kincaid. Our defense needs to show up. That's for certain. Do we give Gerald Ridley a shot here? Where's the inside zone? Why would I want to run like a counter out of this? They have really three down linemen. This should be easy to run the ball. Should be easy. Up the middle, Ridley walks in. All right, down by a field goal. Hey, defense, wake up. Oh, we've tied it, 21-21. And another field goal. How about a touchdown? Is it possible to score a touchdown? We're up by 10 now, and we're going to end up winning this game. So I jumped in for the one drive. It ends up sparking a comeback as Frank Reich, the new head coach of the Jets. Well, not able to pull off the playoff win this time as we make kind of a nice comeback. 
Allen goes for over 300 yards, three touchdowns. The goofball was the Jets' starting quarterback. He does feel like he could be a Jet. He does just kind of feel like one of those QBs that Jets fans make fun of or think is the best. He kind of feels like, I mean, you think about Chad Pennington, Mark Sanchez, Geno Smith, Jared Goff, like maybe closer to the end of his career, feels like he could be really not good. And, um, well, I mean, we'll see. Obviously, that's guessing. I'm not hoping for that. Hopefully, Jared Goff is as amazing as he wants to be, right? But uh, I think he just does kind of seem like a bad Jets QB down the line. Ravens, Bills. I mean, the Ravens are a really tough team in simulation. And they might be the best team in the NFL right now. They're, they're definitely in that conversation, even if you don't think that they are one of the best or the best. They're definitely one of the best. And their offense, obviously tough to control with Lamar Jackson. And their defense has been incredible. And especially in real life as well, Mike McDonald has done an incredible job as defensive, uh, defensive coordinator. And we'll see if he ends up getting a head coaching job. I know Ravens fans don't want to hear that. They want to hold on to him. But we'll see if he ends up getting a head coaching job in 2024. Maybe to a team like the Panthers? Chargers. Ravens up by three early. Our offense has really struggled in these playoffs. Defense hasn't played as well as I would want them to as well. We're up 10-6 right now and make that 13-6. Still pretty low scoring. And the Ravens are able to tie it up. Five and a half minutes to go. It's getting dark here in Buffalo. Okay. What do we do here? Just check down. Try to take time off the clock. Could obviously run the ball. Third and three. Gotta have it here. I don't like how they got kind of almost bumped into each other at the mesh point there, but obviously when you run any type of mesh play, you're going to have guys that cross. You risk them bumping if it's done improperly, and of course that happens in Madden uh, often. All we really need to do is get in a field goal range. I see Kincaid. I threw it too late. I'm picked off. I, 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 I should have just not thrown it when I didn't want to. And now, Allen, Stefan Diggs saved the touchdown. I don't know what I'm doing. I saw it. I'm like, no, it's going to get picked off if I throw it. And then I'm like, ah, all right, I'll throw it. What am I What am I doing? But defense is going to make a stop. We're going to force a field goal. And then it's going to be a touchdown that wins the game. At, it sounds good. Let's see if we can actually do it. Obviously, going to third and seven. Ed Oliver into the backfield. We got to make a tackle. I mean, what are you doing, dude? Oh, oh that was really awful. I'll tell you what, though. If we score, I'm definitely going to consider going for two. Uh, I've got to be smart on this drive and not stupid like I was to essentially give the Ravens the go-ahead touchdown. That was really, really dumb. And I knew it was dumb when I was doing it. But I did it anyway. It's like, that's a classic move. We have a minute to play here. We're going to roll out. Allen can do whatever he wants on the run, except for actually hit Dalton Kincaid. How was that missed? That was an accurate throw and he just didn't catch it for some reason? Bizarre. Well, I want to save the timeout if I can. And I'll tell you why. We're going to throw another nice throw from Allen. Uh, I want to line up to go for it and then potentially call a timeout if need be. I don't want to get iced on the extra point. <laughs> but um, it's not that like the end of the world if I have to call the timeout. Because obviously I can just take the delay a game. Just saying it'd be a slightly longer extra point. So I'm going to save it if I can. But obviously it's not like the biggest of focuses. But yeah, rolling out and making a throw with Josh Allen seems like it's going to be the way here. And oh, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, nearly throwing the game away. I expected that crosser to keep crossing and he just stopped. And I guess it was an option. I wish he kept going. I wish he did the option I was thinking of. 27 seconds. We fit that in there. Oh, we can. Khalil Shakir. This is a good time to call a timeout. I have to. I have to. Just because so much time would tick off the clock here. And you're basically saying, all right, we have one play. Or maybe even two plays. Try to get in the end zone. This way, we actually might have four. So I think that was the right call. We only needed one. They blitzed everybody. We get in easily. Coach actually wants us to go for two here to end the game. And I like that. Let's line up to go for it. We can always switch to inside zone. I don't, I really don't love what they're doing defensively. Showing a lot of presence up front. I don't really know 
what I think would be open here. Kincaid, maybe? Shakir? Slant open. Shakir caught in traffic! Fought through the contact. That's amazing from Khalil Shakir. 20 seconds to not lose the game. That's all it is. 20 seconds. Now, all they need is a field goal, so we cannot play Joe Barry off coverage. We have to press up and not give them free yardage. They have three timeouts. Time might not be a factor to actually get set up here. Some pressure on Lamar would be nice. Quick throw. Keep him in front of you. That's fine. Eight seconds. Just keep them out of field goal range. Keep them out of field goal range. Justin Tucker can basically drill from the logo. I'm actually going to man coverage. And I'm going to take away Mark Andrews. I'm going to have to. Quick throw to the outside. He caught it. Just let him go. <laughs> Just kidding, obviously. Uh, four seconds on the clock. This is the game. Game on the line. We're going... Oh, they're going to bring out Justin Tucker. We have no timeouts to ice him. They're going to kick it from midfield. It's a 60-yarder from Justin Tucker to end the game. And he missed it. Hook him horns, of course. But Justin Tucker, I appreciate you bailing me out. He had the leg, I think. Didn't have the accuracy. And we are headed to the Super Bowl. Oh my goodness, what a game. Gerald Ridley going to be playing up to a 99 overall, by the way, for the Super Bowl. It's up to a true 96. And the Super Bowl is going to be the Bills against the Vikings. Why does that feel significant? Ooh, Ed Oliver actually goes up to Superstar X Factor, by the way. I think that's well-deserved. Let's give him Unstoppable Force. We have five superstar X-Factors on offense. And then defensively, with Ed Oliver moving up, Willie Gay goes up to superstar dev. Our safeties are still not great. Clifford goes up to star dev. Okay. He's going to pass Rasul Douglas probably sooner rather than later. I mean, he's actually a higher overall right now. Rasul Douglas is just playing up. And Rousseau actually went up to superstar dev too. Who is a Bill and a Viking? Why do I feel like Linval Joseph has played on the Bills recently. Did the Bills sign Linval Joseph? Jerome Felton is a Bill and a Viking. And again, I'm sure there are certainly more, but I'm not going to spend all the Super Bowl thinking about players that could have played for the Bills and the Vikings. I feel like Linval Joseph is on the Bills now, or was signed. I feel like I've seen him play. We are up early, 7-0. Defense is playing fairly well so far, keeping the Vikings off the scoreboard, and that's finally going to change as the Vikings get in with a touchdown. And... We've only scored 12 points. 19-7. to seven. Vikings bring it back to a one-score game. And it's a nine-yard rushing touchdown from Gerald Ridley that makes it 26-14. to 14. Vikings are driving, but they're running out of time. Their quarterback is Springs, who they went up and drafted. We saw that. And um, so hopefully he loses the Super Bowl here. Oh, he just got torched. Rasul Douglas just got torched by KJ Osborne. That's when you know you gotta hang him up. Yeah, it's a really bad thing that just happened. Because they're gonna go ahead and get the extra point. They're gonna go for the onside kick. And hopefully they don't get it. I don't love how we're lined up here. But if we recover it, we win the Super Bowl. And we do. Khalil Shakir gets it. Oh, it's tackled from behind. First down ends the game. It's all we need. It's a first down. We bounce it outside. We're going to get a lot more than that. Block as well. Ridley, stay in bounds. Don't fumble. That is the ball game. 26 to 21 will be your final. And we're going to try to repeat as Super Bowl champions. The Bills have finally done it. After losing four Super Bowls in a row as their legacy, Josh Allen has officially cemented a new legacy for the Buffalo Bills. One that includes winning the Super Bowl, the Lombardi Trophy headed back to Buffalo, and we're going to try to repeat. This is what I wanted in year one, but unfortunately things did not exactly work out the way I had envisioned. I'm getting excited for the NFL playoffs, man. I know the Giants probably will not be making them, but it seems pretty wide open. Like Obviously, we have teams that we expect to be the favorites, right? But you never know if the Bills get hot at the right time, right? If... The Chiefs can figure it out offensively. Their defense is as good as it ever has been, it feels like. Eagles, Cowboys seem as good as they have been. And obviously, I, I hate the Eagles and Cowboys, but 
There are some fun, exciting teams to watch. 49ers, obviously. In the AFC, I mean, the Colts are getting hot, and they don't even have their quarterback. <laughs> Carter Minshew is their guy right now. The Jaguars are interesting. Who knows what's going to happen in the AFC North? Expect the Ravens to get out, but does another team? It'll be fun to see. So, no Giants, probably. Almost certainly, but you never know. I will not mention the NFC South. They do not need mention. 36 million. Uh, we're going to pick up the fifth-year option on Dalton Kincaid and Darnell Wright, who we traded for from the Bears. James Cook, I guess we can run it back. He really would, uh, would like to be here. I'll give him the money he's looking for, and he's not interested in signing. Okay, dude. Terrell Bernard? I mean, I don't really want to give him more than... <laughs> But all right, whatever it is to keep Terrell Bernard back, he's the glue that holds his team together. Christian Benford, uh, I will overpay to keep him around. And we'll have 20 million in free agency. Shakir, fine. Right, he's gonna test free agency. Wins us a Super Bowl, and now he's looking to get paid. Jalen Ramsey? Ooh, Justin Matabike at defensive tackle would be nice too, but obviously not in the cards for us. Jalen Ramsey. That is extremely interesting because we could potentially need a corner. Taron Johnson's still sticking around here. That could be okay for us, but Jalen Ramsey's got to be the guy. This is the peak of the Josh Allen contract. I'm just going to move the money, essentially. We'll restructure the contract, free up a ton of space this year, and now we have the flexibility to do what we want, and we'll restructure Stefan Diggs as well. Just moving the money to next year, which means an overpay for Jalen Ramsey to bring him to the Bills. Because he is a difference maker for us if we can get him. I'll also offer on Taron Johnson could be fun to bring him back. He might be out of the Rams, though. And I'll offer on James Cook as well, just to bring him back. But I really want Jalen Ramsey. That's the big one, obviously. We'll see if we can lure him to Orchard Park for a couple of seasons, and we can't. Taron Johnson and James Cook are back in Buffalo. Jalen Ramsey's headed to Indianapolis. Yeah, he wanted a big a big deal. Ends up going on a one-year deal to play for the Colts. All right. Nobody's offering Brian Cook. I will. He'd be a good player to have. We also need a third receiver. Ooh, this guy could look interesting. Yeah, what about Khalil Shakir? Shakir signed. Brian Cook still thinking about it. And then he signs as well, so we're bringing in the brothers James and Brian Cook. <laughs> Except they're not related. But uh, Dalvin Cook is related to James Cook. Fun fact that everybody knows. We do have a first-round pick, obviously. Number 32. And I might try to trade that for a superstar corner. We, we do have Trey White, keep in mind. What are we missing? So we get James Cook back, get Khalil Shakir back. We're really missing a safety, maybe, or two. Ooh, who are you? Got a superstar dev? Taylor Curtis. He's got 99 hit power. Okay, well, that's the 99 hit power superstar dev archetype. He's so slow. I don't know. I mean, he's a linebacker-ish, except he has no block shedding. He just hits hard. That's all he does. But mostly a terrible player. Yeah, I'll trade this first round pick for a big time safety if I can. Isaiah Simmons is here. Yeah, it's funny. Trade for him twice in the same video. I don't know if I've ever done that before. If I traded for the same player twice, I surely have not. Like, definitely not in Madden 24, I don't think. But have I ever done that in any rebuild ever? I would think not, but it's possible. The only thing that makes it tough is I think that could be something I would do because I think it's funny. Uh, we're going to trade for Trayvon Merrig the best safety they were offering up. Well, this is actually perfect. We need depth at defensive tackle, and Rashawn Winters just looks good. B block shed, A finesse moves. Looks like a great player, and he might be. Hidden dev, 85 strength, 74 speed, 83 acceleration. Great third defensive tackle to get. Rashawn Winters actually only a 69 overall. I thought he would have been a little bit better, and this was a good draft class. Number one overall player was a left tackle, 82 overall from Notre Dame, and the defensive tackle is an 80 who went at number two overall. This was a really, really good draft class. Devin Carrington, just a really, really solid player. 90 hit power at defensive tackle is amazing. 
And then this left tackle is just very, very good. So this is the team for the final year. Only rocking two running backs defensively. Our defense looks great, as you guys know. We look a little bit better with Jalen Ramsey, of course. And then specialist-wise, I'm probably just going to throw Stefan Diggs in the slot over Khalil Shakir. Okay, wow, what a great season. 10-7. and seven. Won the division. Our defense was garbage, which is interesting because I felt like we got a lot better on defense. Josh Allen was great, but threw 11 more picks. Not amazing. Gerald Ridley finally had that breakout year. Yeah, I mean, you just need their overall to be higher. They need to be better to perform better. But like at running back, you don't really need to be that good to perform well, depending on the scheme, depending on the offensive line. But I digress. Stefan Diggs, great year. Dalton Kincaid as well. Marco Miner had a nice season. Shakir outproducing Marco Miner in terms of touchdowns is confusing. But Willie Gay, 134 tackles, 8 for loss, 20 for loss for Ed Oliver, led the team, 18 for Artie Hughes, 15 for Rousseau, and this is an amazing season of production. Four double-digit sackers, 15.5 for Denario Smith, 11 for Artie Hughes, 10.5 for Ed Oliver and Greg Rousseau, and then a bunch of interceptions as well. How are we so bad defensively? I mean, the production was amazing. Got the Colts in the wild card. We'll see if he can run them over quickly. And that is the end of the video. Chiefs beat the 49ers in the Super Bowl. I knew we were going to get eliminated early. Just made too much sense for this team that's way too good and won 10 games somehow. But Bernard up to Superstar Dev ends up being a great team. Only one Super Bowl though, but we'll take it. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.